Welcome to the Healthy, Wealthy, and Smart Podcast. Each week, we interview the best and brightest in physical therapy, wellness, and entrepreneurship. We give you cutting-edge information you need to live your best life, healthy, wealthy, and smart. The information in this podcast is for entertainment purposes only and should not be used as personalized medical advice. And now, here's your host, Dr. Karen Litzy. Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast. I am your host, Karen Litzy, and today's episode is brought to you by NetHealth. So NetHealth wants to help you maintain strong relationships with your patients now more than ever. So they have created the Redoc Patient Portal, which provides a secure line of communication between you and your patients. You can conduct video conferencing for telehealth, have secure messaging, share documents and photos, and your patients can view health information and appointments. And they can do all of this 24-7 with secure on-demand access to their therapy health information without phone calls and voice messages. If you want to learn more, contact NetHealth at redoc at nethealth.com. All right, before we get to today's episode, just a quick housekeeping announcement that the Strictly Business Private Practice Mastermind, which is... A, an online program for people who are tired of working 40 to 50 hours a week for someone else and they are ready to jump in and start their own practice. It's for, for first-time PT entrepreneurs. Um, it doesn't matter if you are right out of school or you are 10, 20, or even 30 years in. If you are ready for a little bit more freedom of the way you want to practice and you want to practice the way you want to practice, not the way insurance wants you to practice, then Go to karenlitzy.com slash waitlist. You can sign up for the waitlist, read a little bit more about the program to help you build your cash-based practice. All right, on to today's episode. Dr. Jenna Cantor is back, and this week she is interviewing Dr. Gabby Whistler. Dr. Gabby is no stranger to anxiety and depression. After years of struggling to find her path, she landed on physical therapy and has been combining the two worlds together, the use of physical therapy to help treat and coach patients with anxiety. No system ever works alone, and when the physical, the mental, emotional, and spiritual can all be addressed, then that is when the true healing can be found. So in this episode, Gabby and Jenna cover when anxiety manifests in the career cycle of a physical therapist three practical steps towards mastery over your anxiety, why communication is important to break down the stigma surrounding mental health, and the future role for physical therapists in mental health treatment. So a big thank you to uh, Dr. Gabby and Dr. Jenna for a great episode. Hello, hello, hello. This is Jenna Cantor with the podcast Healthy, Wealthy, and Smart. I'm here with Gabby Whistler, like give a little whistle, and always let your conscience be your guide. Um, so excited to be jumping on and talking about anxiety. And if you can tell from my energy, oh gosh, I never deal with that. What physical therapist deals with anxiety? So first of all, Gabby, thank you so much for popping on to yeah, talk. Thanks, Catherine. thanks for bringing me on here. I love it. Yeah. So first of all, what as what got you interested in really focusing on anxiety for physical therapists? Why this passion? Why not just treating patients and focusing on the patients and their anxiety? Yeah. So it's kind of an ironic story because I was out in California working as a travel PT. I was maybe four or five months out from graduation from PT school and I was miserable. I was like, I cannot do this the rest of my life. Kill me. I, I, I just can't. It was awful. And Andrew Tran, owner of Physio Memes, is my um, now roommate, but he was actually across the country, I think in North Carolina, maybe. And he was one of my- Who knows? That dude moves everywhere. (laughs) He was a travel PT too somewhere. And I called him and I was like, Andrew, I can't do this. It's miserable. And I don't know what else to do. I just racked up $180,000 in debt. Like, I'm supposed to love this. It's supposed to be great. I'm helping people, but I hate it. What do I do? And he was like, well, what do you want to do? What are you good at? What would you love? And I was like, I honestly have no idea. So I had to go to the drawing board and really do some digging. And I was like, what would I love? And the very first thing that popped in my head is I dealt with anxiety all my life. I'm in a much better place. I can't think of anything better than helping other people to get to that destination as well. And And I was like, I can't do that as a PT though, right? And I called Andrew and I was like, am I even allowed to do this? Like, is this a thing? And he was like, well, it, it is if you make it. And something just clicked. And I was like, well, that's kind of cool. 
And ever since, I, I still don't always know what I'm doing, but I'm making the path to be able to do it. So it's a lot of fun, but I still, like I said, I don't know what I'm doing most days. Um, and I still deal with anxiety myself as well. So it's kind of this ironic, but fun twist because that allows me to connect with, with my clients now on a deeper level than as a PT. I've never dealt with a shoulder replacement or a knee replacement or anything like that to really connect with my patients in the outpatient ortho setting, or I've never really had like a major fall to connect with my geriatric patient, but to connect with a 28 year old woman sitting in front of me who's had major anxiety, doesn't want to take meds. And is like, what are my other options? And to show her how to use exercise and kind of monitor what she's eating and drinking and just a mindfulness approach to feel better is incredible. And we can do that as PTs. We learn about breathing. We learn about reflexes. We learn about exercise and movement and it's, it's a lot of fun. So I love that. And, and why do you think there's a whole thing with anxiety and PT? I think this goes hand in hand with burnout. Yeah, it does. So from a clinician perspective or from a patient perspective? Because th- it's on both ends, actually, which is really- Focusing on clinician, focusing on, on the physical therapist. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of it is burnout. A lot of it is expectations that I don't think we're prepared for in PT school. I think going into PT school, we have this grandeur idea that, you know, we're, we're a doctor of physical therapy. We have all this autonomy and we- have the ability to almost do what we want. And it's really quite the opposite out there for most of us until we realize that we are able to kind of break out of that mold. But in the traditional setting, we're very limited in what we can do. And we're dictated and governed by doctors and other clinicians and our patients and insurance. And we think we're going to have all this freedom to make this what we want of it. And we certainly cannot always do that. And I, I think that leads to a lot of anxiety that that gap in expectations, expectations from other people and expectations within ourselves and they're not aligned. And that's what causes burnout as well. So it goes hand in hand. Yeah, I totally get that. For Forgive the sounds, the grumbling sounds. I just want to give a complete you know, story here that's construction in the building, not me being gassy. Okay, I just want that to be clear because we are all just massive ladies here. Yeah. Um, for anxiety, for anxiety, you were saying, it's interesting where you're saying, I don't know anything about this, but then you clearly have a drive to know more in order to help other people. What is it within you that's getting you to help out other people when you are dealing with it yourself? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I know what it's like to be at like that rock bottom and not have any outlet. Cause I, when I was going through all of this, you know, dealing with anxiety, depression, OCD, I knew in my heart, I did not want to take medications. I knew in my heart, talk therapy wasn't for me. I had given it a try and I was like, this just, it's awkward for me. And I never felt like I left there feeling better. So I was like, I'm not going to continue wasting my money. And it was one of those things I sat down with my primary care doctor and I was like, okay, what's next? And he had no direction for me. And I just remember what that felt like. And now as a PT, I, I know, so I said, I know I said, I don't know what I'm doing. And that's true. I don't necessarily know the direction my career is going. Yeah. But as a PT, I know what I'm doing. I know how to prescribe all these, you know, exercise. Yeah. Right. Like, it's I, so love cool. I love that. I love that. I do know what I'm doing, but at the same time I don't. And I think that's all how we all feel in our careers. So really it's not anything abnormal, but, um, knowing that I have tools that other people are searching for, knowing that someone out there needs what I have to offer, but I'm just too afraid to put it out there sometimes is what gives me that little motivation or that little push to go ahead and do it anyway. Yeah, I get that. I get that. It, it's yes. Yeah. And you're, you probably deal with that too. Cause your, your niche is so specific and so focused and so high performance. I'm sure you encounter that as well too. Oh, um, I actually, I did not really dealt with anxiety until okay. after the conference smart success physical therapy live just this past year. And it was when I came back home and I, I have a biz practice where I work with dancers and mm-hmm. all of them were better, which of course is great. But as business goes, freak out zone. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I was just like, this is the worst thing in the world. And where for some people that would be something to brag about for me, that was something to significantly freak out about. Yeah. It was, um, it was awful. 
awful, awful, awful. I do not recommend anxiety and stress at all. Not even a little. It not sucked. Anyone. <laughs> it sucked. Oh my God. It sucks so bad. Yeah. yeah. So that's my, that's my experience with anxiety and, and it, it's got, I've gotten better with it over time. And I think that has to do with really acknowledging, um, uh, taking action for myself. So for you with people with, what are your like big overall tips that you just, when somebody like reaches out to you and they're like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm about to like collapse my anxiety so bad right now. What, what are things that you give them to kind of help them out at that point? Yeah. So made your like top five things or three or 20. I don't know what your, what your number (laughs) is for it. So I'm just saying, I'm shouting numbers. So the very first thing I tell them is give yourself grace and permission because so often we confine ourselves to the notion that anxiety is this horrible thing and depression and and any because anxiety and depression are just emotions truly like they're they're emotions and we so often label them as good or bad emotions in general and we always strive to feel happy and we strive to run away from anxiety and depression the very first thing I tell girls or guys or whoever I'm working with is let it be. You're anxious, like accept it and just sit with it for a minute and allow your body to feel that because your body needs it. It's so, very uncomfortable. It's very yeah. uncomfortable. It's, it's like, it's mm-hmm. like not butterflies, but it's like, oh, it's, it's very uncomfortable. It's, it's like you want to crawl out of your own skin. That's, that's the best word that I can think of. Like you literally want to run out of your own body. Yeah. Like, yeah. And yeah. cry. Lots of you can have that moment. So that's what I was saying. It's like, give yourself that grace to be human and accept the fact that you're experiencing this and then use it as an indicator. So like so often we're controlled by our emotions and they tell us how to live our life. You know, when we, we're anxious, we want to sit in bed, but instead use it as an indicator. What's this trying to tell you? Like what's going on in life? Yeah. Make you feel this way. And Beyond that, what can you do about it? So like you said, action. What action can you take to move on from this? Because so often we let it paralyze us, but that's really when we need to take some sort of action, whether it's going to talk to someone or maybe getting a medication or going to talk therapy or going for a run or lifting weights or like what needs to happen to make you feel better. And it's different for every person. So those those are my top three like starting points. I guess three is my number, but really it's, it's giving yourself that grace, using as an indicator and then taking action. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely makes sense. Um, when you're saying give grace, what are ways that you can, cause it's not just like, okay, I'm giving myself grace. Like what are things where you could actively be, you know, literally taking actions, you know, like cleaning the dishwasher, you know, what are things that you could do to help you start learning what it is to give yourself grace. And on that note, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with Gabby's response. This episode is brought to you by NetHealth, helping you maintain strong relationships with your patients. The Redoc Patient Portal provides a secure line of communication between you and your patients. Conduct virtual visits and have follow-up conversations with your patients via secure messaging when it's convenient for you. Patients have 24-7 secure, on-demand access to their therapy health information without phone calls and voice messages. Video conferencing for telehealth, secure messaging, share documents and photos, and view health information and appointments. To learn more, contact them at redoc at nethealth.com. I'll just share examples of what I do in my own day because I think that might be easier. But when I get anxious, I literally will sit with myself and say, hey, Gabby, it's really okay that you feel this way. Um, And I just kind of let my body, I'll sit with it for a minute. You know, I recognize, okay, my chest is tight. My fingers are tingly. My eyes, my vision sometimes changes just a little bit. And I'm like, this is normal. It's nothing to panic over. This is my body's response. It's okay. It's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Again, it doesn't always make you feel better in the moment. Like it doesn't take it away, but it's like, okay, I know I'm not dying in the moment because often we do, right? Like we're like, oh my God. uh, Yeah, it can feel, I know what you're saying though. Like I've I've had that where I'm like, (laughs) yep. Is this, uh, (laughs) <laughs> yeah. What is going on? Yeah. <laughs> I I would, but um, yeah, so I'll sit with it. And then from there, a lot of times what I'll do is I like to have one person in mind for 
you know, if I'm feeling angry, I'm, it might be my sister that I call. If I'm feeling hurt, it's my mom that I call. Who's really good at helping me through whatever I'm feeling in the moment? And I always have that on the back burner. And that's the first thing that I'll do is get it out because the more we hold it into ourselves, the worse off we get. Um, yeah, it's true. It's yeah. true. And we like it's to, true. It, bo- it boils up in you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And sometimes it's not even talking to someone else. Sometimes like I'll literally sit in my room in front of a mirror and talk to myself. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. Get it out. Like get it out. Like you did get it out in the universe. You know, before we started recording today, we, um, you were sharing something with me about wanting to just get out in the universe because once you do that, you're more likely to follow through and take action and feel better about it. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Like <laughs> I'm doing this when we start <laughs> off this, <laughs> I'm doing this. It's true. But I never thought about it in a way where you would use it as a, as a, tool with when you're like feeling it because it's like a zit that's dying to pop it's so it can get yeah uh, uh, absolutely yeah um yeah so for you where do you find in the physical therapist life with people reaching out to you a common time when people are do you actually, okay, I'm going to actually separate this out. A okay. common, a common point in someone's career, whether it be student, new grad, or professional, where are you finding a real like this is where it's happening a lot, specifically in the physical therapy career? <laughs> the answer is kind of funny, but all of the above. So for okay. students, um, I'll kind of go through each one. For students, yeah, that'd be great. Um, yes, yeah, <laughs> down a little more because I think we all do. It's just a matter of like. Each so each stage will have points throughout it that are very specific when that anxiety is like greatest. But um, for students, it's typically right before the NPT um, or right before an exam, like a lab practical, that students are reaching out and they're like, "Oh my gosh, I'm so anxious. I don't know how to handle this. I've never really experienced anxiety until now." Usually, that's when when they're noticing it is in grad school, um, and they're like, "What can I do?" And then you know, I'll, I'll try to talk with them through that. Um, yeah. As far as PTs go, a lot of new grads. Uh, experience it because again it's at expectations they they're in school for so long and they have people guiding them and now all of a sudden they're kind of fed to the wolves and they're expected to do things that they weren't com- they weren't yet in their minds comfortable with and um, also seasoned clinicians a lot of times are like it's either burnout it's um, not finding satisfaction in their career it's wanting something more like not feeling they're not necessarily burnout but they're also they feel like they're doing the same thing day in and day out and they're not contributing to the world in a, in a greater way, I guess. Um, or they're not seeing it. Yeah. It just yeah. is frustrating for them, but also sad in from an outside perspective because they are, they're still making a huge impact, but they're just, it's routine for them now. So they're not seeing and it. And so it's not as fulfilling. They just feel, they feel like they're, they're very separate from what they're yeah. seeing. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. That's powerful. Yeah, yeah. Right. Cause they're still, they're changing people's lives. Like every 20 minutes they're changing someone's lives, but they're just doing it so often. They don't, they don't see it. Yeah. Where does shame come into all this? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think it's very specific person to person, but, um, probably again, that mismatch in expectations. So they don't feel like they're providing the care that they should be for their patients. And then in front of their patient, you know, they have to continue and be professional and carry on throughout their day. But inside their brain, they're like, am I really the best person to be helping this person? Um, you know, we, we tend to tell our story ourselves stories like that. So it's true. That's yeah. really true. That's insanely true. Yeah. Um, wow. Common too. Yeah. yeah. Um, if there was going to be like, I would say, one big vision you have for physical therapists regarding anxiety, what would your be your big, like, Oh, one day this, this, this is it. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of a far stretch, but I'll, I'll bring it back full circle. But myself, another clinician, because right now as PTs, we can't treat anxiety or we can't treat mental health. It's just not like fully within our scope of practice. Um, 
so myself and another PT are actively working to try to get PT into, there's a world federation for mental health and there's other countries that are participating in, and it's specific to physical therapy. So we're hoping to get PTs in that role because I think right as PTs, we're very uncomfortable with the idea of mental health because it doesn't get talked about it in PT school. Um, we don't really talk about it with our patients. It's one of those things we try to skate around it as much as possible. And there's some clinicians out there who are great at it. And I think we're, as a whole, we're getting better, but the more we can slowly, (laughs) slowly, the more we can start talking about it to our patients, the more we feel comfortable within ourselves talking about it to other people and opening up as well. Cause if we can't get other people to open up, how are we ever going to open up ourselves? So and it goes both ways. If, if we can't open up, then we can't get other people to open up. So I think once we're able to, as PTs, kind of get into this role just a little bit more, and it's not that every PT has to treat mental health specifically, but we find ways of bringing it into, because we know if someone's struggling with their mental health, their physical health suffers. And so if we're not addressing that, it's so true. And if we're not addressing that first with our patients, then we're probably not getting them the results that we need. But if we can't do that, if we don't know how, and and that goes back to our own lives as well. So it it, it all kind of comes full circle. So my big goal is to get PTs to be able to go to conferences at CSM, for example, and, and have a course or have a talk on the side of mental health. Cause right now there's very little out there for us. Um, There's a place for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> so, but truly but truly <laughs> yeah. literally like nothing and it's because we're so uncomfortable with it so that's my dream is to be able to get us in that scope of practice and also show clinicians how to handle in our patients and I'm hoping through that they see how they can handle it within themselves as well um and kind of a kind of tackle it from that approach yeah yeah that makes sense to me Oh my gosh. This is perfect. Thank you so much for coming on. I would love to ask for you to just have your mic drop moment. And this could be for anyone who may be dealing with anxiety right now. And I would love for you to just acknowledge that person and just give them some big picture advice if they're really feeling stuck. Yeah. So Oh my gosh, I have so much in my head right now. I know, I know. Just like so the, many first, directions. the first word, you, uh, start with the word, <laughs> if you. Yeah, so if you are feeling super anxious um, and having a hard time handling this, especially throughout the workday, my biggest piece of advice for, I, I guess this is the direction I would go. So specific to clinicians who are feeling anxious throughout the day, and I actually have a couple girls who I work with right now who are PTs and they're new grads and, and they're feeling this way too. They feel like they have to compartmentalize this and they can't talk about it at work. Talk mm. to someone, like whether it's your boss or a coworker, someone there needs to know that you're dealing with this because if you continue to try to do this on your own, it's only going to snowball. And then your boss is going to come to you one day and be like, what in the hell is going on right now? You know, what? what because your performance is is off and the way you speak to patients so the earlier you can nip it in the butt and let them know hey i'm dealing with this right now i i don't want to go into details or or you can say whatever the heck you want to but they need to know about it and the more comfortable you get talking to your boss the more comfortable your boss gets talking to their employees about it as well so you might be opening up a door for another clinician right next to you because more than likely everyone in your building is dealing with some form of anxiety that's true. It's not talking about it. That's very true. That's very, yeah. very true. So for I clinicians that. specifically, that would be, that would be my big thing. I love that. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for coming on. Where, how can people find you? Where yeah. the, find you and contact you? Thank, first, thank you for having me on. But yeah, uh, <laughs> my health DPT is my, that's my Instagram and Facebook handle. So they can, they're free. My, my health DPT. Mm-hmm. M-I-N-D. And then health DPT. Oh, yeah. got it. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. This was yeah. an absolute joy. I, I <laughs> think that this is going to be extremely helpful for people who are dealing with anxiety. So you guys don't be afraid to reach out to her. She's here to help you. You are not alone. Thank you to Jenna and Gabby for a great conversation on anxiety in physical therapy 
And of course, thanks to our sponsor, NetHealth, for sponsoring today's episode. So NetHealth is helping you maintain strong relationships with your patients. They've created the Redoc Patient Portal, which provides a secure line of communication between you and your patients, conduct virtual visits, and have follow-up conversations with your patients via secure messaging when it's convenient for you. Patients have 24-7 secure on-demand access to their therapy health information without phone calls and voice messages. To learn more, contact them at redoc at nethealth.com. Thank you for listening, and please subscribe to the podcast at podcast.healthywealthysmart.com. And don't forget to follow us on social media.